Welcome to Players Only, your backstage pass to the PC and video game industry. I'm Scott Steinberg, and this week we're exploring today's hottest craze, casual games. Co-host Casey Young, Diana Falzone, and I ask industry insiders, why are mom and grandma suddenly fighting for the controller? Well, casual gaming is taking off because traditional console games, the hardcore games, really only appeal to a very niche audience. and. Casual games, you know, as the name implies, are you know easier to learn, easier to pick up. They don't require a huge amount of investment in terms of learning the controls or getting through levels, and that's really appealing for people who have a life and don't necessarily have six, eight, ten hours a night to spend on a quest in World of Warcraft. Uh, how we define a casual game is a game that's extremely accessible. That's uh, for us a defining feature. So the game doesn't have to be simple, it doesn't have to be shallow, but it does have to be very easy to start playing, very shallow learning curve, very accessible. What's so cool about casual games is that they represent this enormous promise. The promise is that, hey, maybe video games are going to grow up. They're going to not just be for the 18 to 35 year old boy with the baseball cap on backwards and the controller in their hand. They're going to be about a mass market entertainment medium. Um, and that's the promise of casual games. That's what it says, hey, make this happen and the mass market will be unlocked. The casual game business has always been huge. In fact, the early game business was all casual games. Atari, early times, really it wasn't until about 83 that was, the games weren't casual. And then they got violent, lost the women, they got complex, lost the casual gamer. And so now, all of a sudden the internet and new business models has enabled a whole new renaissance, if you would. So it's really cool and, the, and casual games are back with a vengeance. The bottom line? Sounds like it might be time for a revolution. But why? What's happening to today's gaming audience? Today's game player really is everybody, and increasingly, everybody actually means everybody. So, you, four or five years ago, the casual game business really started to evangelize this idea of games for everyone, and by everyone, we really meant women, because women were largely excluded from gameplay prior to the advent of casual games. The next generation casual games and the next generation game design really will bring everybody into the fold, from 70-year-old women in China to 12-year-old kids in Africa. Well, certainly, I think the success of the Nintendo Nintendo Wii and the advent of games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, the market for playing games or game players are changing. I think that almost anyone between the ages of 6 and 60 have a game someplace in their life, whether it's on their cell phone, whether it's on their desktop at work, whether it's on one of their kids' platforms, and they're going, this is fun. And the challenge for us as game makers is, you know, more people want to play. What else can we do to entertain them? What else can we do to captivate them and engage them? And that's why I still think the best things are still, you know, in the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. Everyone plays video games. And most people don't consider themselves hardcore gamers. You have those who are at home playing, you know, Puzzle Quest and Mahjong and all that stuff. And then you have those hardcore gamers like us who are in the FPS, in the MMOs, and all that stuff. So I believe that everyone at heart is a, heart, is a gamer. So it, it affects all of us. There's this huge audience of casual gamers out there, and I think that they've been kind of underserved. I mean, no, downloadable games are a wonderful uh, thing, but they're you know, obviously single player. You know, you're not really having a chance to connect with other people. And I think that when you look at websites like Pogo.com, for example, they, uh, they have single player games, they have multiplayer games, but no matter what environment or, or what kind of game you're playing on Pogo, you're still connected to other people. You can chat to other people while you're playing Word Womp, so you're not really isolated. And I think that casual MMOs and uh, sort of connected gaming experiences, as I like to call them, are going to really um, bring communities together a lot more than we've seen before. Here's something that may surprise you, though. With over one billion handsets in circulation, today's biggest gaming communities aren't centered around services like Xbox Live or PlayStation Network, but rather cellular phones. Still, some would argue that they're not the future. 
<laughs> cell phone games, for me, I've never really been into them. It's just such a limited platform. The graphics don't look good. There's, you know, there's no joystick. You're forced to play with some number keys. With new technology like the iPhone, that's an exciting prospect of having touch panel games. But for me, cell phone games still, it's like playing something for Atari. <laughs> Uh, I think mobile gaming is is, is overrated. Yes, uh, it's it's unfortunate, but I think it's uh, it's true. It's it's it, currently we have a lot of retro ports, licensed times in mobile, and we don't have a lot of games that are actually truly made for the mobile device. Mobile entertainment. I think where mobile entertainment is interesting is as the phones themselves get greater capability. So you know we've seen bandwidth expansion, so you can get richer files downloaded the phone. We're seeing really huge uh, increases in the amount of flash memory in a phone, so you can hold, you know, store a big game. And the devices themselves have better display, you know, color graphics, LCD, better controls. So I think that's real, but I think it's going to still be limited to more casual games. And I think the biggest problem with cell phone games ever taking off is that they kill your battery. So if you're like me, you know, I'm a business guy. I carry the business phone, you know, this BlackBerry, and I need it. And I, if this phone dies in less than 12 hours, I'm screwed. I can't get my email, I can't make phone calls, I can't sit for two hours and recharge it. So I'm not going to kill my battery, you know, spending a lot of time playing a game. No matter where you choose to play, however, one thing's for certain. There's no escaping the influence of casual games. We try to create games that, that everyone can play using uh, things that everyone, everyone already knows. We don't want you to have to read a complicated manual just to be able to start playing the game. So in a game like Civilization, you know, you probably already know that maybe having some gunpowder or electricity might be a good thing to invent, or pirates, you know, you, know, you probably have an idea that blundering a few ships might be a good idea. So uh, you can start to play these games right away, and then as you play, you kind of maybe want to learn a little more get more into the depth of the game. But our games are games you can just pick up and play. So one of the things with video games, um, you know, a couple years ago was that they were very focused on the hardcore gamer. And we wanted to make a game that everybody could feel comfortable picking up, again, whether you're, um, you know, a boy or girl. And we did that through the very unique and innovative guitar peripheral that we did. You know, everybody sees a guitar and they know exactly what you're supposed to do with it, right? And I think that's the real simplicity and elegance of Guitar Hero. Casual gaming has absolutely affected our game development process. We're, we see that the, the very large market that's out there for casual games is being important for us to break into. So we're focused on bringing that, those kinds of games into what we call the, the MMO space, a little, which is a little bit harder core, and making maybe what we call harder core you know, casual games. We think that there's a big market there. Obviously, casual gaming is a huge deal. Has it affected the way you guys approach your titles? Definitely, you make games for hardcore gamers, but is it making you rethink your art a little bit? Yeah, we're really evolving how we approach making games. And I think we certainly make games for, for the core gamers. We're also making games for a broader market now because we're, our vision is actually to really deliver emotion. And that's a very human theme. It's a broad theme. And I think depending on how, what platform you're talking about, you can sometimes that, the connection can be inside the game uh, where you're actually identifying with characters that you're, you're part of your team, your squad mates, or you're feeling like an explorer, you're feeling a sense of awe and discovery of the exploration, or a sense of pride in the customization progression, or visceral fear even with combat. Those, that's within the game. With outside the game, there's also the social interaction. You look at a game, a system like Wii, and as much of the fun comes from playing with other people, multiplayer, and you're having the dynamic and the emotion be and the tension between you, and you're having fun as a you know, party game, for example. So I think if you look at it that way, uh, the different systems foster creativity and different approaches. And that's a wrap. We'll see you next week on Players Only.